Well, hello and welcome along to The Daily Brew, the devotional where every day we drink a new brew of coffee and we see what God is brewing for us in the Bible. Yes, it's cheesy, but it's true. And you join me here in Auckland, New Zealand for day 275 of 365 days of Bible reading. 90 days to go on our Bible reading plan. We are itching closer and closer week after week and getting through the whole entire Bible, which is a massive achievement. If you've made it this far and you've read every single day, Congratulations. Don't stop your reading. Don't stop it. Don't stop till you get Anyway, uh, today we've got some brew and we've got some Bible as per norm. So let's get into our Bible. Have a look at what we're reading today. Psalm 116 verse 1 to 11. Philippians chapter 3 verse 1 to chapter 4 verse 1. And Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 10 to chapter 5 verse 31. As always, those are on the descriptions on every platform as well. Today's brew, we're continuing on with our roller blend, the Daily Drop Espresso Roast. I'm excited. I've got this as a French horn press or also known as a plunger. So let's give this a try today and see if we got even more creamy, even more sweet, even more smooth flavor and texture of our coffee today. Let's give it a try. Less of that weird taste at the start. You remember yesterday, if you if you uh, remember, it was a little bit of a weird start to the flavor of the coffee, but it does smooth out quite sweet. This is actually nicer the heavier that it is. I, so I gave it a 7.85 or 7.89 out of 10 yesterday. I'm gonna give this an eight, because it's getting better. It's still not quite my favorite, but it's good. It's a solid coffee, it's a lovely taste, it's a lovely flavor profile, it's up there with an eight so there you go give this a try I, I actually do recommend these guys this is actually quite good I've, i i've never had them before this is the first time i've had them so I, I do like it give it a go that is it though for the brews today let's get back into the bible the reason that we are here when it comes to life we have to ensure that the drive of our lives is a relationship with god digging into him further it's tempting to get caught up in the rat race of life pursuing the things that the world values as important If we're going to be people who dwell at following God and building our relationship with Him, this psalm gives us a huge clue into how we can do this for the long term. What we have to do is remember how God helped us. In other words, remember God's faithfulness. In verse 1, 6, 7, and 8, he recalls different times that God was faithful to him. If we want to be someone who does great things for God— or even just be with God in our day to day, the best thing we can do is lean into him and recall his faithfulness. Go with God and watch as his greatness takes you forward. Ambition is an interesting topic. It's an interesting thing, interesting concept. Personally, I'm very ambitious. I'm very driven. I'm very focused. And I work really hard to achieve the goal that's in front of me. But is ambition okay? Well, for many Christians, there's an automatic association with pride when it comes to ambition. And so therefore, ambition is bad. But is ambition okay? Well, for many Christians, I've already said that. I'm reading the same thing. (laughs) There you go. But, so, is ambition okay? Mm, What do we see in Paul's life? Because in Paul's life, he's very ambitious. Before being a Christian, he was super passionate. Like, hugely passionate about his ambition. He, he drove himself incredibly hard to persecute Christians, right? It's all he was doing. He was, he was very effective at doing it. And then after he encountered Jesus, he didn't lose his ambition. He just changed direction. If anything, you could argue that he was even more ambitious. He describes himself as an athlete, desperate to win the race. I've always been an ambitious person. And I love, uh, I love success. I love setting a goal and driving towards that goal. But it's always come at a bit of a cost to me, especially here in New Zealand. I think New Zealand's culture is one that's not of ambition. It's more of like a settle down, mate. She'll be right. Ease up there, stallion. No one's called me a stallion. Uh, but I think that, that what, what, I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say here is that often in my life, I've been called prideful or arrogant. And I think if I'm honest, maybe in the first few years of being saved, it did take me a while to turn off my radio mindset and my, my ambitious mindset of making myself a name in New Zealand. That was what I wanted to do. I wanted to be someone famous on the radio. I wanted to entertain people. So I had to turn off that mindset and adapt to kingdom mindset, which is Jesus is the name above all names, and he's the banner that we fly, not my name. 
But since then, I've been so driven to build the best church, the best kids ministries, youth ministries, young adults ministries, the best TV show, or even the best Bible podcast I can, all so that God can get the glory. I think that's where the church loses its ambition. We, when we lose our ambition, we lose our ability to affect change. Nothing ever changes because someone was mediocre about it. Change, impact, and victory only comes because of ambition. But here's the key with ambition. We've got to make our goal to glorify God and bring Him all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor, and then we can be ambitious and drive towards achieving that goal. Be passionate about something. Be ambitious, dream dreams, and then work hard to see them come to pass. Don't let small-minded thinkers slow you down. Sure, listen to wise counsel, but make sure your wise counsel are big thinkers. Don't throw away your confidence because you will be rewarded. Jeremiah is someone in our scriptures who had to be ambitious as well. As I said a couple of days ago, Jeremiah literally had the hardest job of all the prophets. He literally watched as one by one people turned away from God and started worshiping false idols. And Jeremiah's job was to say, guys, what are you doing? There's a better way to live. Like God still loves you. Repent, turn back. It's ambitious to think that Jeremiah had to speak on behalf of of the Lord. And so I want to encourage you that just like Jeremiah, just like Paul, and so many of our Bible heroes were ambitious with the right goal. Jeremiah's goal was to, to try and to speak the truth of God to help a generation not fall to the wayside. It's not important whether or not we're successful in the goals that we set out to achieve. It's just whether or not we have Jesus as the main goal, as serving God as the main goal. And listen, if you have a 10 out of 10 goal and you reach a 9 or an 8 out of 10 in terms of success, I'd take that over a four because you aim for a five. So have some ambition, dream big, keep Jesus at the center and go for it. I believe in you. I reckon you can do great things. Three, two, verse of the day. Verse of the day today, Psalm 115 verse 17 says, I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. When was the last time you just sacrificed some time and offered up a thank offering to God? When was the last time you stopped doing something you wanted to do and just sat with the Lord? I used to do this all the time as someone young in, in my ministry journey, but also in my Christian journey, I used to sit and just spend hours and hours listening to praise and worship music and leaning into God to try and understand His presence. I think part of the challenge is, is we know that we need to give God praise, but we don't do it in our own lives. I think so much of the problems that we face in our lives would come to an end if we just stopped and sacrificed some time and actually gave God praise and called on the name of the Lord. That's what you got to do. you got to praise God, but you also got to call on His name. So, so take some time today in your day to pause, to sacrifice some time, and to return some praise back to the Lord. And that is it for the Daily Brew today, day 275 of 365 days of Bible reading. Thank you so much for joining me. No matter where you are around the world, it's been awesome having you with me today, nice and early. What a time to be alive, people. That is it for today. If it is a Saturday day, have a great rest of your day. Unless it's sleep time, good night, sleep tight. And we'll see you back here tomorrow for another day of the Daily Brew.